Hello everybody, welcome back to the uh, Lost World LP. We're about to start World 3, Tropical Coast. And we're joined by a special guest who uh, we are finally popping his <laughs> Find the Computer Room Cherry. We are joined by the one and only Brain Scratch Com's own X and Shadow. How you doing, Ted? Hello, everybody. It's um, I'm glad to be here, question mark. <laughs> um... You know when big celebrities like start doing his low-budget comedy movies to try and pay the bills? <laughs> That's what's going on right now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, although, uh, the word big is probably in, like, giant quotation marks. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, I, I am just waiting for the comment section for people to start trashing you for no good reason. Um, yes. <laughs> I, I can't wait for that either. Oh, look! <laughs> underwater drilling and, and stuff. Wow. I don't get the point of it. Just uh, flat out. You get rings, okay. And... Well, I guess, I guess the point of it, it's, it's drill in 3D. Exactly, so... Am I missing something? Like, now I'm out. Um, what? <laughs> okay. That looked, I have, you know, I have never done that underwater before. Um, that looked painfully boring. You aren't missing much. It doesn't control very good either, although I, um, I can't remember. It's been a while since I've actually played Lost World. If, like, the, the, the patches, um, alter, uh, updated controls make it work any better, uh, probably not substantially so. Um... Well, using using the uh, control stick on the wisps was a big improvement. Oh yes, yeah. it, it was definitely one of the bigger. Uh, th oh, I forgot that you could do this, like uh, roll yeah. around in the in the robot. Another another pointless thing in this level. Like, um, it's it's just when I was playing the game, I just rolled, like not rolled, I ran away like to the side of them because th they looked dangerous. But I guess you know, um, somebody just rolled into the mouth by accident or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 I don't know. Hey, oh. Sonic, Sonic learned from Shadow in 06, when the mouth is open, I can attack. Uh. <laughs> that's, an, that's an actual quote from 06, by the way. <laughs> they just don't offer their own path, and they're just like, if you want to go slower and roll over enemies, here's your opportunity, I guess. Which, but... to be fair, it, it is kind of like those walkers in Mega Man X. You can skip them, but like, it's more fun to punch things to death from a giant robot. <laughs> It's a little bit more obvious in that one because it's just sort of sitting there with nobody in the cockpit, though. Yeah. And here it's just it's it's like standing there and it's obviously an enemy, so it's just not. I'm gonna hijack that crap. Or I but. haven't played that game yet. Oh, it's pretty fun. Pretty fun. So Ted, um, you just said you haven't played um this in a while, and I think it, you, I think, <laughs> with the exception of Clement, no one really enjoyed this game. But I think it, it, in the entire but, world. But I, well, in, in, in the brain scratch, I forget, did you flat out hate this, or were you just this kind of like, is, it's not very uh, good? I did not have fun during my, what, what were you doing? Um, <laughs> uh, I did, I did not have a lot of fun playing this game uh, during my, my initial playthrough. Um, like, you know, I, I will give credit where credit's due. Parkour aside, I think the game controls very well. You know, graphically, it's nice. Like, I'm not a fan of the, like, the, the, the kind of bland art style, but, you know, Technically speaking, it runs great, and the, the you know, 60 frames, 60 yada, yada. frames a second, and I think this is a conversation you and I had after, um, apart from that popping we just saw, I think after, <laughs> I think after playing, um, Boom, it kind of makes us appreciate this game a bit more for how technically well it runs. Yeah, it, it you know, it, it runs great, and, you know, graphically, it, it's, it's a pretty, uh, pretty great looking game, it's just, I hate the level design. Like, I, it, I, I, don't, it, I, I don't necessarily agree, but I mean, graphically, I mean, it, it looks, it looks fine. But the, um, I mean, I, I get why they went for a more basic art style to try and get it to run in 60 frames, and like that was, I'm like, okay. But then you see Mario, but then you see Mario Kart 8, which yeah. looks amazing, and that runs perfectly at 60 frames. So I don't buy there. We had to, that we had to simplify the graphics to make it run smoother. It's like, no, that's bullshit. Like, this Mario Kart 8 makes it, you know, runs amazingly fast. In 60 frames, it looks freaking fantastic. I've read somewhere that it's actually easier for a kart racing kind of game to get away with a higher frame rate than a platforming level, but I forget all the reasons. I think it's because, like, platforming levels have a lot more going on with them or something, but either way, that game does look, like, really incredible. And then Smash Brothers. I mean, like, yeah, for, I'm sorry, but for, I mean, like, for, like, a platform when the levels themselves would be bigger, so there would be more to render, I guess, within a specific level. But it's no excuse. <laughs> um, well, part I think part of it for uh, a lot of other games is, is that you do, in a plat in like a kart racing game like Mario Kart, you don't have to render each individual texture like very like they don't have to be super high res because you're going to be speeding fast them. 
um, at um, so that no, you're not gonna notice every one thing. Now, not that doesn't stop Mario Kart 8 having a stupid amount of really great tiny details that you're never gonna notice. Uh, but... The water, the rainwater. Oh my God, that stuff looks so. Whoever, whoever was in charge of like the puddles of water needs a raise and to be <laughs> crowned king of the world. Well, that was like that looks so freaking good. It's even it even it even extends to stuff like uh, like in the, the the Mario Kart 64 level the the Peaches uh, Raceway one uh, like the toads in their hot air balloons actually like turn on like the the little fire spurts to make sure that they don't fall and st like stupid little huh. details like that <laughs> that you would never notice but uh, so I was thinking like when you're playing most normal platformers they go at a slower play pace so that you have to actually look at each individual. Like, you have time to look at each individual thing, but that doesn't necessarily apply to Sonic all that much, because, again, you know, it's, well, supposed to be fast. Lost World doesn't always do that uh, very much. <laughs> faster than Boom, well, give him that, it's faster than Boom. Uh, yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, Taffy, what were your thoughts? I mean, I, I kind of, I you know, there's, there's stuff missing, clearly, but I actually really like the Lost World script, like the um, storyline, as it were. Yeah, it's, I think it's entertaining, like, aside, well, aside from most of the Zeddy being one note and Tails and Sonic's, like, little argument in the end feeling kind of forced, I think that it's, it's enjoyable. Um, you know, I, um, if there's one thing that I think Boom does do better than The Lost World, it's cutscene dialogue, because Boom has hilarious, uh, uh, hilarious cutscenes, but you know, the, this uh, Eggman and uh, Orbot and Cubot in particular can get me to laugh in this game. I was, I mean, I was talking about this with Clement. I also think not, maybe not in terms of um, of graphics, because this is clearly a better looking game than Boom. But in terms of cutscene animation, I think, as you said in, in the Bench Scratch OP, like the Boom characters are so much more expressive in their models. Yeah, they do a lot more like. With, I don't with, with the eyes and stuff. It just looks so good. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's. Um, yeah, I think you know part of having better. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess one of the curses of having better uh, graphics for these characters is, is that it's easier to get away with stuff like squash and stretch for uh, the, the the low poly kind of crap character models that Boom has. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing like to go off on a quick tangent about. About Boom, like after we were, we were playing Boom and watching and going back to look at some of this footage, I I, I prefer Modern's design, but I prefer, I think I prefer Boom's proportions. Like, what, I like, like the, the lanky legs and stuff? No, not so much that. I mean, I'm, mainly things like the hands, like like cluster, like these, these. So let's, let's refer to this series as this Modern Sonic. Modern Sonic character designs, their hands are massive. Like compared to the rest of their bodies, like Sonic's whole hand can cover his stomach, like his whole, like his whole, like, like torso. <laughs> Whereas the the Boom character, they have like more realistic proportioned hands. I don't know why. It's a, it's a really dumb thing. But also like Sonic's Sonic spikes in um in Boom. Like you feel like he could sit in a chair comfortably. Like with the, like modern Sonic's design, I can't see him sitting down anywhere. Like at the end of this game, where he sits on, he like lays down on the grass. Because of how big his spikes are, like his head's gonna be at, at like a permanent forty-five degree angle. Gareth, I can safely say you've looked at Sonic's hands more than I ever will in my entire life. Because you know what? It's the start of 06. 06 is Sonic model's hands are disgustingly big. Okay, I'll uh, give you that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh, the fruit level! Oh, oh man! This is this is something. Um, I. I <laughs> like, you know, it's this level, I think, where uh, the Lost World designers just gave up on trying to be anything different from Mario Galaxy. Because, <laughs> like, uh, Gusty Garden Zone has almost the exact same sort of gimmick here, only instead of having a worm come out of the fruit, the fruit just turns into an unexplainably large stream of juice, and that connects I, you from piece I, to piece. <laughs> I will say, I do, I do like the juice thing. I think it's kind of funny. Yeah, and it's it's definitely a more interesting mechanic than some of the other more kind of gimmicky ones. Like you're not like running around in a snowball for no good reason, or <laughs> or anything like that. But it, it's I, also kind of uh, you're trying way too hard to get this red ring. <laughs> I, I need it. <laughs> All right, Lewis, calm down. Um, <laughs> I will say, I will say like again, this is just me being uh, completely pedantic. But who is dropping these giant pieces of fruit? Egg, egg, Eggman, Zeddy, <laughs> gigantic trees that are invisible. 
Well, some of them look robotic and some of them don't, uh, if I remember correctly. Like, uh, like, don't some of them explode or something? Uh, or like, <sighs> I'm, I'm sure that at least one of them is clearly a robot. Uh, robot fruit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> seriously, what the hell is Eggman smoking when he's... Just imagine him sitting down like, I've got to make a robotic fruit for this alien planet so Sonic will think it's real fruit and explode on him. Yeah. <laughs> It's not an alien planet, it's a planet within Earth's atmosphere. How what? many like, of those does Mobius have, by the way? Because there's... Well, te uh, if you want to talk, technically there's there's three. Little Planet, the Floating Island, and the Lost Hex. <laughs> you know, for some reason I thought the Lost Hex was in outer space, but now that you said that, they do just fly a biplane to this place. So. They, they fly they fly in some clouds. Hmm. I and try not to the... think about Sonic's world anymore. <laughs> Oh yeah, because you, you have to call it Sonic's World. You can't call it Mobius. <laughs> you can't call it Earth. It's Sonic's World. And what is with what is with, with all the chicken bandits in this level? Um, uh, Sonic Three Nostalgia. That that's all I can think of. No wait, they were technically not in Sonic Three. They were in Sonic and Knuckles. Okay, and my also, bad. <laughs> also, also the Clux were um, from Sonic Two. Yeah, but uh, so you were wrong. You were wrong on both accounts, there, Ted. Oh, Sonic's <laughs> World sounds like a really bad Crush Forty song. Sonic's World! Sonic's World! Either that or like some edutainment game that would be shunted to the PC. <laughs> Which like, we went over it, but like, what the hell was it Was it called before Sonic was born? World. What's it gonna be called after, it's, after he's dead? Pronouns World. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is what you've trained for, guys. We beat 50 enemies. Oh, wow. Um, my, my grandma will be so proud. <laughs> <laughs> we hit the gym with buffles and... So let's get that. Oh yeah, so Chris, um, do you want to talk a little bit about the missions a little bit? About no, how they work? but and, I'll and do it anyway. What, and, uh, about how you get, what you get when you do them all. So, missions are like this weird kind of like Xbox 360 achievement system in the game where you have three active at any time and it's really incredibly repetitive stuff like get 50 rings, cool, get 100 rings, cool, and they just keep going up and there's like 20 different ring gathering missions. Um, So you do them all and as you, I hate them. As you complete them all, you'll get those weird, <laughs> stupid fighter jets and uh, UFOs and shit you're never going to use. And when you do all the missions, you unlock uh, a message saying you get a prize, and there's no prize. What? What? Yeah, you get. I did this. You, you get, get no a... prize. It was, this was just Sonic Team's. Like, winking or not to Stan Lee. You got it no it literally says something like, You did all the missions. Congratulations. Here is your reward. And you get no reward. And I emailed um, Sega's customer support about this. Because it was really bothering me. And the guy's like, Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody at Sega bothered to 100% the game? Wow. <laughs> Apparently not. They didn't bother to program 100%. So, um, we just beat that boss. It looked, uh, no, to me, since you're standing near the checkpoint, it looks like Sonic got to the halfway point of the level and got really, really confused. <laughs> it looks like Good he got to the halfway point and gave up. I'm done. <laughs> <sighs> Just another easy, uninteresting boss fight. So you only get, like, the, the jet parts for beating these, uh, right? Um, oh, yeah. Um, in order to, like, really get the most out of them, you have to connect to the 3DS game, uh, if I remember correctly. I think... Uh, I think that's how you unlock the five star ones. Oh, oh, ugh. yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> have, have you played the 3DS game, Ted? No, I have not, <laughs> and I never will. Good. <laughs> I, I paid fifteen dollars for it. I played like the first three oh, levels, nice. and I just put it down. I have no desire to go back to it. I paid fifteen dollars because I, I bought it from the same place Chris did, purely for the interest of making a vine about it. I haven't played. I haven't played it. Yeah, and your copy came completed, so you didn't oh, yeah, have no, to beat tell it. Oh yeah, no. Tell a lie. I played it once, and all the levels were unlocked, so I could just say, "Yep, I've done the game." My, <laughs> my cart said it's completed. That was me. <laughs> I could really go for a donut. I haven't ate today. I know, right? Same here. <laughs> uh, look again. We've been all this, but I, this confuses me. So Zavok's the, the leader, but Zik's their master. I guess he. I guess it's like Dragon Ball Z, where Master Roshi's technically their master, but he's like useless after the first season of Dragon Ball or something. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. 
Also, like, I don't know what their evil plan is. I mean, like, couldn't they just go out to the store to get their Mountain Dew? They don't have to suck it from the plane, except <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like so, like they they kind of their kind of thing is um, they wanna they wanna siphon energy from Sonic's world to like make the, make themselves stronger. But like in destroying themselves, if they destroy Sonic's world in the process, one they'll be the only six people left on on the planet. So who gives a shit? And also, I'm pretty sure destroying Sonic's world would mess up the gravitational pull of the Lost Hex. I, I think <laughs> it's all just blind, stupid, like rage against Eggman and trying to get revenge on him for being an asshole. But well, it, it's it, also like they're, they're evil to be like that's like, like they're deadly six. I mean, just from their character designs, because they they're full of spikes and stuff. You can just kind of assume they're evil, and like you know, I, I kind of get their motivation of um, you know, we we, we want to get back at Eggman for enslaving them, but they're just dicks to begin with. So like, and yes. like I don't get it. If they're part of Sonic's world's like gravitational pull and atmosphere, like are they just always looking at? The planet and going someday we will be complete dicks to them. Like I don't. If only we had a plane we could choose to get down there. <laughs> but up on the lost text, uh, oh, I was trying to do a Christmas, a Grinch stole Christmas uh, reference, and I forget the the, the the line from the book. Damn it. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, this is the oh, this is the the bearable one of the grinding levels, if I remember correctly, right? Yeah. The, the, yeah, the this insane... is the fun one. Oh yeah, the insane ones in the the last. Okay. Um, Which again makes no sense how we're in an active volcano, but we go into some under underwater like cavern section. Yeah, um, I, I will say Lost World soundtrack's pretty good. I, um, you know, it's it's composed well and all that. I don't find myself remembering an awful lot of the music aside from this track. I absolutely love the sea real grinding. Bottom, sea Bottom Segu is so amazingly. It was when um, this was when Aaron um, Weber was still at Sega, and he would post like music tracks from this game, like leading up to um after it was released, and he was just like, "This is like the best one ever." And this is it's a really nice to kind of like relaxing piece. This yes. is one of my favorites in the entire series. I I love it. Yeah, uh, this is probably one of my favorites since. Um, like uh, probably since colors came out, I think. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so it's you know it, it uh, regardless. Um, like suffice it to say, this is the only thing that kept me sane during that goddamn lava mountain <laughs> <laughs> uh, version of the level. Because uh, I, I hate that's that. The, that's why the the uh, Izuka was like uh, Tomio. Like this level's terrible. We know it is. All right, so we need you to compose the greatest piece of music ever, <laughs> so fans won't just turn off the game while they play it. <laughs> Which, um, speaking of music, again, um, uh, Tommy Otani is back again as a sound director. He's, he's at this point he may have been sound director for as many, if not more, games than June Sonoy, maybe. Um, I'd have to double check that. But um, it's it's. It, Speaking of Jimson, this kind of has um, Shout the Hedgehog Syndrome, where um, Tom, Mr. Watani is doing all of, he pretty much does every single level track. And there, I forget the uh, gentleman's name, but there's a gentleman who does all, all the cutscenes, so it's like two people but pretty much did was the it, entire soundtrack. Was it the Unleashed guy, um, Iguchi? Yes, yes, he did all the, all the um, cutscene tracks. And um, I messaged him on Facebook one time, because I was like, hey, um, Otami, you know, a big, big fan, um... I, re I really enjoyed the um, Lost World soundtrack. I was just curious as to why you didn't um, reuse Eggman's theme that had kind of been established since 06. And the, his response was just, oh, um, we just decided to do something new, but maybe we'll bring back that theme in a new game if fans like it. And I was like, yeah, please do. I like that theme. Please bring it back. I love it so much. We're dying. Oh no! Everything's gone. Uh, oh no! It's just the it's just turned into the coloring book version. Okay, that's no big deal. <laughs> We've just gone back to white space time. So generations two. Hooray! I wish. <laughs> I fucking wish. Sonic Generations 2, the, the Lost Hex Edition. <laughs> it's just all these levels again, <laughs> as classic and modern. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna be sick. Oh, you know, I, I'm thinking about it. Sonic's 25th anniversary is coming up in two years. Um. This is the only new game that they have to pull levels from if they were to do a Generations 2. So no, they could they could go to Are like, we that close? Uh, oh it was like 2016, there's, I think. Uh, there's, it is. Yeah, 2016. There is. There's no Man. way we won't get a Sonic Generations 2. Like if we get if we get that, it wouldn't be into the 30th at the least. They, they I can't see them doing a Generations 2 so soon. Yeah. I think. What do you guys? 
Like, I think we're getting the movie for the 25th anniversary. Do you think we got like a tie-in game or like maybe the Cursed Adventure 3 or? Well, you know, you know it's weird because um, <laughs> even even though we do get like pretty much a Sonic game every year, we tend to not get like a main canon games. We, we tend to get canon games every two years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so because the next canon game is going to be next year, most likely, um, if we like, like the game we get in 2016 will probably be some kind of movie tie-in game. They could do a colors thing though, where they had colors in 2010 and generations in 2011. Like they could have split oh, good the team. Point. I didn't figure that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I think well, that yeah. was well, that was what they did with uh, Boom, wasn't it? They like they they had Boom fill up the Sonic slot for uh, this year, so Sonic Team could work for more than one year for once on a game for next year. Uh, yeah. Like. What we're saying though is that Colors and Generations are both main Sonic games developed by Sonic Team, so maybe they've kind of split the workload within the well, development I think, studio. I think the reason for that though was they were on different consoles, so unless we, unless um, oh yeah, well see that the next game is most likely going to be for PS4, Xbox One. Which is I, I would I would say, one. yeah, um, and then if we get a game in 2016. We may, I would imagine that would have to be a different studio, and it, it, that may be. Do you think, do you think um, Sega will, will come back to Wii U again so soon? Like, I'm sure we'll, we'll probably most likely get a Sonic game again on Wii U. But do you think we'll get one for a while? I don't think they'll, they'll focus mainly on the other consoles for a while. Um, I could imagine them doing something like they did with Unleashed, where if they make a they make a game like specifically for uh, uh, PS4, Xbox One, they maybe like do a dumbed down version for the Wii U. Um, because Sonic games generally do tend to sell the best on Nintendo consoles. I guess that's exactly. mostly just because where, you know, aside from the Sonic fan base, which will buy anything with his face on it, no matter the console, um, uh, the people <laughs> um, who will buy a Sonic game... <laughs> you say that, you say that, but Boom kind of bombed hard. <laughs> uh, uh, hmm. Okay, true. Uh, I guess there's an exception to everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like the, the when it comes to, pe uh, to people who don't normally buy a Sonic game on Impulse, I guess those people generally go for the Nintendo version. I, I, it's just, that just seems to be the, the trend. So, mm. um, you know, I, I, I don't think Sega would want to limit their uh, their audience, I guess, is the, the thing I want to If say. they do, I mean, I, like, um, I agree with that. I think though they'd be more inclined to do a 3DS version of the next kind of like maybe the PS3, PS4, Xbox One game, as it were, because hmm. that that tended to be you know it's like with um generations we got the 3DS version as opposed to like a Wii U version. So I think because they, they, they tend to be cheaper and quicker to make. Yeah. Like they because apparently like um Sonic Boom Shattered Crystal apparently didn't start production until like the Wii U game was like pretty much almost done as it were. Like apparently, because there, there was a recent interview, I think on Radio Sega, the Sega Lounge, where they had one of the, um, I think, I think the director of the um, of Shattered Crystal, and he was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll turn around." It wasn't very long. Yeah, they, um, Shattered Crystal seems to, to to have had a more, I don't want a, a less troubling development, but it's they seem to be more open to talking about the game after it's come out. Whereas, like, is is Big Red Button still like not saying anything? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Big Red Button's still around. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. Oh, well, oh. I know. Well, I know. Um, Stephen Frost, who was the Sega producer, has pretty much not commented on Boom at all. Um, which you know what? This is something I wish I would have. I would have brought up in the Boom LP. Um, so Sonic Boom: The Event, which which was about a, a month before the game came out. Mm. Um, they must have known, man. And like at that point, they must have known. <laughs> when I when I got to speak to Bob Ruffay, like the creative director or whatever, he looked so upset, empty, and tired. Like the event was tiring, but he just seemed um, apathetic. <laughs> <laughs> then I showed him a copy of Jack and Daxter, and he lit up. So, uh, said, oh, good game! I remember when I made good games. <laughs> <laughs> well, those four souls. Those Can four you souls. defeat those? Monkey rocks, by the way, coconuts. Damn you, coconuts. Uh, you could in Sonic 2. Uh, I don't know. I, I think <laughs> I normally just try to go under them. Because, um, like, I, I didn't. I don't remember ever really bothering with enemies most of the time, unless if I had to in, in this one. Um, I, I don't know. See, I, I think I have weird memories of going supersonic and trying to repeat it and still not being able to do it, so... <laughs> Gosh, Eggman! Mm. You, you think that Eggman would have stuck with that one if it if, if it could withstand Super Sonic? <laughs> well, it's, it's, again, it's like um, in, in Sonic Colors, there's those um, 
like bat bat nicks in Starlight Carnival, which are which are immune to the um, um, homing attack. You use them to like progress vertically in a level. It's like Eggman, make all of your bad nicks from whatever material you, you made this one from. They made it from it's chrome. Cool. In the future, everything is chrome. It, it's, <laughs> it's just the Dr. Wily uh, issue where it's just like, why don't you just make everything out of metal helmets? Uh, um. <laughs> well, don't you make everything out of, out of killable spikes? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that works too if you want to be boring. <laughs> that Speaking still, of. That's that still one of my favorite. Mega Man skit, spiked wool man. <laughs> so, does anyone have any strong feelings about this level? <laughs> uh, I barely it's... remembered that it existed, actually. Um, like, I'm looking at this level geography, and now it seems familiar, but other than the, the, the rail grinding level and the fruit, most of Tropical Coast kind of just blends together for, for me. Um, I, I guess you could say that about a lot of uh, Lost World, uh, not uh, mm -hmm. Lost World in general, is, is that in, in, in the levels alternated between being kind of forgettable or making me want to rip my hair out. So, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm either like, oh, I hate that one, or uh, oh yeah, that existed. So you know, <laughs> I don't understand how gravity works in this place. <laughs> I, I don't. Probably like the rest of the game, and just well enough, but well, not it, the way that that's, that's what I meant. I mean, I don't understand how it works on the uh, the Lost Hacks. No. Uh, I was just taking Zix, a chance to make a cheap pot shot this game. Z um, Zick's <laughs> mouth wasn't moving when he said that line. He, he's also grown ten times in time. I will say one thing. One thing I will say about the 3DS version is that sometimes um, a handful of the bosses are actually better because you can't just home You can't just like um, power up a home and attack. And I would say in particular, Zick's boss fight, I think, is actually a lot better on the 3DS version. It's actually it's actually pretty fun. Well, I'll never see it, so I'll take your word on it. <laughs> is it me, or do the, the, the first uh, like the, the first version of the boss fight always seem more fun than the second uh, version of the boss fight? Cause it's really, yeah, because in, in, in the first one, it's it's like it's... You have to kind of work more to get to the, the Deadly Six. As opposed to normally in the second version, it's just like, I mean, like, he's just, like, at that point, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, at that point, we just pretty much just home and attacked an old man in the back, and then jumped on his spine. His yes! Spine. <laughs> I'm the coolest. <laughs> wrong, oh, wait, wrong character, sorry. I don't like the rings were just glitching into the grass. I don't like that. Also, Ted, Ted, the grass here, it's 3D, it's not 2D. So once again, the Sonic game is better than Hyrule Warriors. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got Viva Pinata grass. That's kind of neat. Uh, was that game any good? Um, like it's I, it's relaxing. I, I enjoyed it. It's Guys, like, we just we just missed we just missed MC Eggman. Oh yeah, Eggman really likes to rhyme in this cutscene for some reason. <laughs> I love this way he goes. The rebellious swine have stolen a device of mine and are using it for ways in which it was never designed. MC Eggman in the house. <laughs> Isn't there isn't there like a, a club remix of uh, uh, of Eggman's SA2 theme on one of the on the CDs or am I imagining no, something in, that doesn't in, exist? In Shadow, in Shadow the Hedgehog Remix Factory did a kind of club remix of, of Eggman and called it the Doc Row Beatnik mix. Oh, that's, that's what I was thinking of. Oh, <laughs> it's really good. It's really, we should take that and just put those lines over it. <laughs> I was gonna say I, I think there's a club remix of every Sonic Adventure theme on those CDs now, or at least twenty of Open Your Heart. <laughs> The best one. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know how uh, how Eggman caught up with them. Um, Eggman's the fastest character in the Sonic universe. Yeah. There's there's a few moments of of not progressive lines. Eggman saying "Man up, tails." I love it's not, that. It's not something I expect in a Sonic game. I'll be honest. I will say that I did like the little background details of Orbot just sort of messing with Cubot's head. That was pretty. That was yeah. pretty funny. I was like, yeah, Orbot and Cubot make make for great background characters, just to do like little gags and stuff. But uh, yeah, this was so this is the end of Tropical Coast. Ted, uh, how do you feel now? You are no longer an an FTCR virgin. Uh, kind of violated, actually. Uh... <laughs> it gets worse get... after the Skype call starts recording. <laughs> oh, good to um, know. <laughs> so Ted, um, you know, to kind of sum up, any has your opinion changed much seeing Lost World again? Um. Not really. Um, like, you know, they, I had the little issues that, you know, got fixed by the patch, but in the end of the day, I just don't like the level design, and unless if the patch is, like, three gigabytes large, you can't really do an awful lot about that, so, you know, eh, mostly. Um. <laughs> <laughs> 
You heard it here first, folks. Eh, X and Shadow. Yeah. Um. So, Ted, do you have, do you have anything you'd like to plug before we depart? Um. Well, since I basically never touch my solo channel anymore, uh, brain scratch mostly. Uh, watch us. We do funny stuff from time to time. <laughs> Almost. Is, 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 it, is it an upcoming OP you'd like to promote? Um... Well, to be honest, we actually haven't really started recording anything at the moment, so uh, watch DMC, I guess, and and it, I don't know. Um, eventually, I'll record Hyrule Warriors, I I think. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. I want I want I want in on that one. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my hat in. I want in on Hyrule Warriors. I love that game. Okay. Um. So, <laughs> thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you, Jet Tech, for joining us, and we'll see you on uh, the greatest level in the world. Frozen Factory. Ugh. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs>